first of all, give us your outlook for the OPEC Plus meeting, given that, again, we saw the UAE with this last-minute objection. Yeah, we did see a surprising delay to the conclusion of the, of the meetings yesterday. But I think at the meetings today, uh, there will be agreement on uh, further restoring of production uh, in the market. Um, you know, we think we still need around 2 million barrels a day at least uh, for the second half of the year to just keep the markets, uh, you know, in a reasonable uh, sense of supply and demand balance. So, so we would expect about a 400,000 barrel a day increase per month, um, you know, through the rest of the year just to keep markets balanced. So how much of that has already been priced into the markets right now? I think some of it has. I mean, we think the oil is going to exceed eighty dollars a barrel um, um, before um, not too long. Um, whether or not we're going to see prices really move forward to triple digits, which you know some are looking for, I think remains more of a moot point. I think there's still uncertainty around how the uh, COVID D variant is going to impact demand, particularly in Western economies. Uh, as we go into the second half of the year. And then as we move into 2022 and you see the end of the uh, OPEC agreement, that's going to put a lot more oil into the market you know, next year, which I think uh, you know, will start to cap some of the price gains that we've seen. Neil, what are the risks when it comes to WTI of a sharp inventory drawdown when you take a look at these time spreads? Yeah, look, I think that, you know, when it comes to WTI, I mean, obviously, you know, we're looking at a market where, you know, we've seen very large, you know, inventory draws, um, you know, over the last, uh, you know, six to eight months, something like 300 million barrels uh, has come out of uh, OECD inventories. Um, you know, U.S. production, you know, has obviously been lagging the recovery we've seen in crude prices. But I think there is, you know, certainly signs that we're seeing um, increases in activity in the Permian Basin. Uh, you know, the rate count has been rising. And I do think you'll see, you know, rising levels of crude production as we get into the end of this year. And certainly as we get into 2022, uh, as prices remain at these levels. So I think the discount between TI uh, and Brent will probably start to increase uh, towards the second half of the year. But there's no doubt that those strong inventory drain gains um, have, have been really the driver behind the tightening spreads. Yeah, let's take another look at that discount. So we've already brought up this chart, but I want to bring it up again. It really shows WTI's discount to Brent uh, touching the narrowest since we've seen since October 2020. So that dramatic narrowing, does that mean there's a potential for WTI to trade at a premium to Brent eventually? I, I doubt it. I mean, I think that, you know, we could we could see TI trading, you know, close, um, you know, or maybe at a small premium, maybe over the next couple of months. Remember, we're entering the peak demand season, uh, you know, in the U.S. We're, we're in driving season in, in the U.S. over the next couple of months where, you know, gasoline demand is, is going to reach peak levels. So it, potentially we could see, uh, you know, TI, you know, uh, exceed Brent. But I don't think it's really sustainable, uh, you know, given the fact that we are going to see, uh, you know, a significant increase, I think, in, in certainly U.S. volumes, you know, towards the back half of the year, uh, and as demand starts to cool as we get into the, the autumn. Neil, we also heard that India's gasoline consumption has rebounded to 90 percent of pre-pandemic levels. What can we expect in terms of consumption coming from Asia? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we've seen China, you know, is back above, um, you know, pre-pandemic levels. You know, India is reaching, you know, close to pre-pandemic levels. Um, I still don't think we're going to see a normalization of full travel, though, um, until the middle of next year. Um, but with that being said, um, you know, we are expecting about four million, three to four million barrels of additional demand, uh, you know, as we go from 2Q into, you know, 4Q. You know, which is going to be, you know, very supportive of the market. Um, you know, certainly as we go into into the end of the year. But I think in terms of just the overall demand in Asia, it remains the the key driver of, of global demand. Um, mm. um, and, and I think you know that that will continue to, to to be the case as we go into next year as well. Neil, very quickly, when does U.S. shale ramp up again? Well, then you're starting to see this this happen. You know, there has been a reticence, um, you know, to 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 to, to see a, a a quick snapback. I think just given the devastation that we saw last year, plus the consolidation that we've seen, uh, you know, in the sector, which has taken a lot lot of the the smaller tier players, you know, out of the market. But you know, at seventy dollars a barrel, you know, it's very profitable to drill for shale. And I think you know, as as long as prices stay at these levels, you know, we are going to see a, a supply response from from the, from the US. And, and you can see that in the rig count already. So I think it, it, there is a lag between Brent, the rig count, and, and, and production. 
But I think you'll see at the end of this year, you know, U.S. production starting to rise, and certainly into next year, I think we'll see some some higher volume gains there.